Now, those are the things uh, we just talked about that people normally think of as successful. But now I want to tell you about the stuff that I'm most proud of. And it's not what you'd normally think. I'm proud of every time that I found the courage to tell the truth, particularly when I could lose something. Now, if there's nothing riding on it, like, hey, I like your socks, then, you know, it's no big deal. But what if telling the truth could get you grounded for six months? What if telling the truth could get you kicked out of school? What if telling the truth could have you lose your girlfriend or your boyfriend or have your friends throw you out of their group? What I'm most proud of are the times when I've said, you know what, screw it. I am going to take a risk and I'm going to tell the truth. And it might be walking up to a woman that I'm attracted to and saying, I'm attracted to you. Would you like to go out? And then hold my breath. It might be that. It might be, um, here's one of my, my best examples of when I really took a risk. When I was in college, I stole the college sign. I was about 18 years old. And not once, but twice, I stole the college sign. And then years later, I'd be driving past the, the college and I'd just feel a little guilt. Like, you know, that was fun back then, but right now it just seems like vandalism and someone had to pay for that. So finally I knew what I had to do. I had to tell the truth. So I called up the principal who didn't know me and I said, hi, I'm David Wood and um, I got to tell you, I did something I'm not proud of a long time ago. I stole the college sign. In fact, not once, but twice. And he's like, who is this and why are you calling? And this was 20 years ago. What do you care? And I said, I like to tell the truth because then there's nothing to hide. I don't have to worry about anything biting me and I can feel freedom. So I'm sorry. How much does it cost? And he said, well, your timing's good because we just lost another of the damn things and they're bloody expensive. So I paid for the sign. And then a week later, I got an invitation from him to the opening of the new wing of the college. Now, bear in mind, this is a college I was banned from. They did not want me around before this. And now I'm invited personally to the opening of the new wing. And at that opening, the prime minister of Australia at the time, John Howard just happened to be there opening the wing and I got introduced to him, which was a big thrill for me to shake the hand of the Prime Minister. So there's just one example of how telling the truth and risking, I was risking prison. I didn't know what they were going to do to me uh, for admitting theft, but that's the stuff that I'm most proud of. And there's something else I want you to know about successful people. Uh, when I look at successful people, I just assume that they've got it all together. They don't have the troubles that I have. They don't have the money troubles that I have. They don't have the um, insecurity that I have. But I don't, I don't think it's true. Now, a lot of people look at me and they think, well, look at that guy. He's, he's got a really successful career. He's doing really well. He's got a great partner. Uh, he's got it all together. But I couldn't do that because of my background or I couldn't do that because of whatever. Well, I want to tell the truth right now and let you know that I don't always have it together. In fact, a lot of the time I'm really scared. For example, every time I get up on stage, you saw me in front of 1200 people. I'm terrified. Right now I'm nervous because I'm talking to camera. I'm talking to you guys. And I have had one of the hardest times in my life was when I had anxiety attacks and I couldn't control it. I just wasn't sleeping. I was feeling panic, my heart was pounding, I went on medication for anxiety, and then I went into depression for a while, and it was tough. And I'm glad that I was able to find the courage to research and to find the steps that I could take that I could go and get myself well. And the reason I'm telling you this is because whenever you see someone has it all together, or looks like they do, don't buy it. You know, they're just like you and they're just like me. So anything that you've got going on, you think, oh, I'm different. I'm the only one that's got that challenge. You're not. And be careful of how you define success. The TV, the newspapers, they're telling us every day, our parents, this is what's successful. Even here, I'm giving you an example of, of, of what could be called successful. But Maybe you don't need a hundred grand a year. Maybe you don't need a big flashy car. Maybe you don't need a huge house. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't want kids. Maybe you do. 
if success for you is having a quiet place in, uh, in the mountains where you can just enjoy nature, then please go for that. If success for you is traveling around in a van with a guitar or trying to make it as a band and enjoying the journey, then please do that. I studied for eight years to become an actuary and it was painful, it was really hard. And a year after I qualified, I quit. And I started looking at what I really enjoyed. So, just a caveat, be careful about taking on someone else's definition of success, including mine. Now, I'd like to suggest a couple of tips, if you like, to make school life uh, not necessarily easier, but to have more freedom in your life. One, decide when to walk away and when to stand up for yourself. Now sometimes you just gotta go with the flow, you gotta do some kind of Aikido move, be like the bamboo in the wind, and just like say, fine, I'm gonna let this person push me around because it's not worth it. But other times you gotta to decide to stand up. And the times I regret most in my life is when I didn't stand up for myself. And I just kinda of went with the flow. Second thing is, express your attractions. I really like you and I'd like to go out. Express those and be willing to get a no. Be willing to get 10 no's just for the freedom that comes from that. And the third thing is be willing to tell the truth, to take a risk. I had a friend say to me once, um, when I grew my hair long, I had a ponytail. And I said, I'm gonna be successful in corporate America despite having a ponytail. Yeah! And he said, you idiot. How about being successful in corporate America despite telling the truth every single day of your life? And that's a game worth playing. So I hope you've enjoyed some of these stories and some of these tips. Uh, I'd love you to have a really good time at school and I'd love you to have a really good time once you get out of school. And again, I'm going to mention landmark education because if you want to really enjoy life, you have to work on your inner game. You have to. You can't just try and make money and get a good job. You have to do the personal growth work. And Landmark Education, I've sent my family there, I've sent my clients there, I've gone and done it. They do smile too much and they wear name tags. It's a little strange, but if you can get past that, it's worth it. So I'd like to leave you with one of my favorite clips from uh, the speech I gave to 1,200 people. Enjoy. My life experience is valuable. Woo! Oh, one more thing. If anything I said struck a chord with you, and perhaps you want to ask a question about anything I said, I'll give you my private email. It's david at solutionbox.com. And I promise to respond. Cheers.